On today's episode of Take 5 with Clean Facts, I'm pleased to welcome back John Clendenning, the founder and CEO of Carpet Cleaner Marketing Masters. John, welcome. Hey, Jeff. How's it going? It's going great. How are you these days? Doing good. Doing good. Good. Today, we're going to talk about where is the best place to market your cleaning or restoration business online. I think everyone thinks it's got to be Google, but there must be more than that. What's your answer to that? Yeah, so it's a question we get every single day um, from, you know, just people wanting to know about our services and also just in general, um, friends that have been in the industry for years. John, what do I do? Um, the answer is actually the best place to market is anywhere and everywhere that you're um, that has the attention of your ideal customer already. So the whole goal of digital marketing is to maximize the number of leads that you can get online from the sources where the people hang out the most. That sounds like a lot of work. So it must take a plan. How do you begin to develop your own digital marketing plan with that in mind? Yeah, so really rule number one is invest in yourself. Um, kind of like we talked about in the last episode, um, you don't have to be the doer, but you have to know you, you're the marketer of your company. When you own a business, you know, you're really the marketer of that service. You don't, the, the provider, you can, you can hire people to do the job, you know, eventually stuff like that, but you gotta know how to get your, your name out there and grow the business and build that. So you gotta invest in courses and training and webinars and, and books and just really learn the subject matter um, really, really well. You really want to, um, from then, you want to kind of get into planning your budget. So we do talk about um, for service businesses, home service businesses, 15 to 20 percent of projected revenue should go towards advertising. So kind of have that number in your head because you want to grow, you want to be out there. That's how you expand a company. Um, 70 percent of that in today's day and age should go to digital. So 15 to 20 percent of what your projected revenue is for the next year is your number and then 70% should be digital because again, the majority of people are coming through a digital channel of some sort. Um, and then the final one is you wanna track every lead. So we're in a digital world now, tracking is so much easier. You can have call tracking numbers on things. You can have what are called UTM codes and pixels and all of this stuff. You can nowadays track from the moment someone enters your funnel, their crazy journey through it and the different things they saw and the pages they went to and might've come back a week later and all that stuff. And then when they finally become a phone call, a lead, uh, that then turns into a job and finally the end booking, you should be able to track as much of that journey as possible and attribute what was working best for you, what attracted their attention and how it landed into ROI in your pocket. Okay. When you deal with your clients and those you help, John, you must get asked the question like, what's the best online marketing approach to consider overall? Do you have an answer for that? Yeah. So best online marketing is build the assets first. So the difference between like, so online becomes sort of like the organic rankings, your website, your, um, again, your Google listing, Google maps, rankings, organic rankings, your reputation and your social media. Those are assets that as you build them, just continue to give back year after year after year. And it's like the investment is time, maybe a little bit of money here and there, but it's, it's sort of like one-time investments for long-term and, you know, long-term asset value, right? As you rank on page one, you get a lot of phone calls from that. And maintaining that rankings is not as difficult as getting the, putting in the six months, a year or more of good SEO to get there. Um, the next one, so we always say start with that, build your assets. Then you're gonna get to your paid. Um, paid is like your pay-per-click, your Facebook, maybe you're doing TikTok, maybe you wanna do um, a paid listing on Yelp and things like that. You start looking at the paid as the secondary. Um, it's more expensive. As soon as you stop paying, the leads turn off and you've got no asset value, but it's a great way to fill the schedule in the, in, the, you know, in the interim, and when you've got more capacity, you can turn on more and more paid ads and grow your company that way, but the assets are what actually drives the company. Okay. So those watching this, that they might love what they're hearing. They might be a little overwhelmed, but you know the question is, where do they start? Yeah. What's the first thing? Um, so start, get educated. Um, learn learn what it is you don't know, kind of understand what digital marketing is for service businesses. Um, you, if you're hiring it out, which is great, 
at least know what you're hiring. Don't just be all in on one strategy because that that's never really a great idea. Um, you want to take stock of where you currently are at as well. So what that means is um, there's lots of online free tools to get um, sort of a snapshot of your visibility, check your competitors, all of that kind of stuff. Get with a digital agency that can run an audit for you. Figure out what you what you are doing well. Hey, you're ranking really good here, but you're completely invisible over here. That kind of stuff. What are you? What's actually working for you to drive leads and what isn't? Um, and then set that budget and that plan in place uh, so that you know that it's, it's again it's it's getting in the race and starting to run it's not trying to you know sprint and and do it all it's once you've got that in place you know what to aim at and you can build it that over time sounds like a real strategy thank you john for this today